Greetings, fiends. So, what is horror punk? Um, Rick brought this up. I'm sure the guys from the Undead 13 are going to do a video on this. Uh, it yet again, this spawns from another uh, horror punk Facebook group conversation. Uh, so. We really need to split this down the middle here. There's, no matter what it is, it was the same with the punk scene in the 70s and 80s. It was the same with the metal scene. Although metal is a little more unified. I mean, that's just kind of the bag. But you need to split it musically compared to culturally. Because the culture tends to influence the music, but in, but in the, big, it, the music influences the culture as well. It's a bit symbiotic, um, but in this case, uh, my perspective on this is from being around the horror rock thing for so many years. Um, I musically, you know, 15 some odd years ago, there was more of a no, there's never been a unifying sound. There are tropes, for sure. There are tropes, but uh, the one thing that makes our little nook of music not death rock, not psychobilly, not, um, you know, uh, not goth, not metal, not straight up punk. We bring the camp. Campy as shit. You know, we're, we're fucking, we're way too goofy and splattery for punk rock. We're certainly way too punk for metal. Uh, we don't take ourselves near as, like, dark, ominous, and serious as the goth scene. Um, and, you know, between death rock and horror punk, I mean, that's really splitting hairs, man. Uh, there's a lot of crossover, uh, really sonically. I mean, there is a, a little more defined sound for death rock, but we bring the camp. And I would argue that we all like horror punk as a sound, uh, tends to be more melodic. There's a lot, uh, we like to sing along, but that's not necessarily true because stuff like Gein and the Grave Robbers and the ghastly ones, you know, they're fucking instrumental surf rock bands. Um, you know, I could easily see Mumula putting out a fucking just straight surf rock record or, you know, whatever. Uh, there's a lot of throwback in horror punk. It, it, like, one of the, th one of the, a lot of the tropes, it, it has definitely, the, the dynamic has shifted in recent years to a lot more pogo punk. But in the beginning of what, what I would consider the, uh, the second wave of horror punk. Uh, a lot of that 1950s and 60s pop songwriting and melody, which is arguably what a lot of uh, the Misfits brought into the, their songwriting. Uh, like there was a lot of that in the writing. I mean, Nuke and Mr. Monster, I mean, Nuke never touted it, but did was doing way better at it but boo wop you know like a a, a doo wop kind of monster punk th hybrid thing um blitz kid had a fair few songs that were definitely of that 50s and 60s flavor um so on and so forth i mean there are just lots and lots of like good 50s and 60s bubblegum pop songwriting mixed in with the, the the bits of metal, bits of goth, bits of this and that. It's kind of... Horror punk in itself is a melting pot, and we don't need to be limiting that box because sonically, we have one really one of the most diverse scenes musically. Uh, I mean, you look at me metal is really, really kind of defined and that hinders the art. Uh, the same with just about every other genre, whereas horror rock, man, as long as, as you're up there, you know, being creative in a 
a, a manner that that pulls in horror and sci-fi and all that dare I use the term nerd culture type of thing um, you know bringing in all of that pop culture of horror and science fiction that we know and love so much that kind of puts you in, in, in with us a lot and because of the not so strict musical genre settings and people can go out and make good in other little scenes but you know may have more of the following within us uh look at the ck5 they're a fucking like springsteen-esque rock and roll band and i mean they are part of our scene we bring them in and uh hold them close um other examples would be Shatter Reichenstein. Um, it's this weird conglomeration between like like 60s surf pop and Motorhead and the plasmatics all kind of squished together in this weird thing. And it works. Um, like Antarctica versus the world. Horror theme slathered over, uh, just a straight up fucking uh, like '80s hardcore record. Really good. Um, the Forbidden Dimension of of all bands. That's fucking like '60s and early '70s garage rock. Really well written. Straight up horror themes over everything. Uh, so there's no defined sound, and you know there's tons of surf rock bands. Uh, if anyone remembers Creature Feature, that was like one dude and a keyboard, and they were fantastic, or he was fantastic, whatever. It, it was kind of ca almost cartoon-esque um, songwriting. I don't even know how to exactly explain what he was doing, but it was really good stuff. So what is horror punk? Well, sonically, it's all over the place. As long as, as, long as you're touting some horror and sci-fi in it, bring it on. Um, horror punk as a scene, whole different, whole different thing. I mean, I, I know this is going to stem off of that whole, our, you know, horror punks, the juggalos of the rock world, punk world. It kind of does because we kind of have our own like culture and like circles and all that going on. And you know, we'll get to we're gonna do a podcast on that whole you know horror punks and juggalo thing. I have many many thoughts on that. I'm saving them for that, but it does extend from that. I mean, like our, it's not even a, I, I, I guess you would call it a scene. Hell, at this point, most of the, most of these people were all like family, you know? Uh, good examples of the zombie stomp, which I couldn't make it to because, you know, broke as shit. Uh, I was sitting here working on last weekend's video and, uh, my friend Rachel, which I'm sure some people have seen this if you've been watching any videos from Zombie Stomp, in the middle of Darrow Chemical Company's set, she fucking proposed to her fian or her now fiance boyfriend. I about shit a fucking vlog right on the spot. And, uh, like, I know it, half the people at that show I know, knew, I know. And, uh,. That's just kind of how it goes, you know. And uh, so you, you you can't define one without the other. But when it comes to the musical constraints of horror punk, there are no hor there are no constraints. Bring it on, man. Uh, Walk among us. There's two chicks that uh, are doing uh, misfit songs by piano is fucking awesome they're one of us bring them on so that is I mean there's no 
real sound. There are tropes for sure. Woes are there. They don't necessarily make a band horror punk. I mean, there are a lot of bands. Forbidden Dimension and Shadow Reichenstein, too, right off the top of my head. I don't think there's really a woe in any of their stuff. Um, I, JXV, uh, Rick or Treat's old band. I'm fairly certain there's not a woe in any of that stuff because it was a little more on the metalcore and hardcore end of things. Still horror rock. So on and so forth. I mean, the woes, and same with the 50s and 60s songs. You know, like, kind of influenced songs. A lot of bands have those. A lot of bands. Everybody from Cancer Slug, uh, Down the Line, Blitz Kid, Misfits, you know, whatever. It doesn't necessarily make the band uh, a horror punk or horror rock band. I mean, look at fucking Rob Zombie. I mean, we don't necessarily always associate Rob Zombie with our thing. It's kind of like, uh, like a peripheral. But horror, yes, and no songs like that. I know a lot of people in the scene who love Rob Zombie. I enjoy Rob Zombie quite a bit. Hell, White Zombie was one of my big things when I was like 15. I still love White Zombie for that matter, besides the point. So, I mean, that's kind of the, the, you know, I made notes, don't mind me. But yeah, I mean, really, it comes down to what we as the culture of horror punk like out of our music. We like melody in our music. Doesn't matter if it's, if it's coming from the metal end the one person keyboard end or the surf rock end or just the straight up punk end we like some melody with it and we like our shit campy you know if it, it, I, I would say the culmination the antithesis of what the what the the beginning of that second wave scene has gone through at least in campiness has coalesced in the Jasons I mean look at that band who the Jasons fucking kill but look at that on stage that is just like concentrated fucking horror punk right there and I, I do like a, a lot of the, the middle finger that's come up in that band but that's besides the point we like campy, we like melody and we you know we like it dark. I mean, that should that's duh with the horror. Um, so yeah, what do you guys think? I I can't wait to hear what the Undead Thirteen has to say about this. Um, but hit the description or uh, not the description. Hit the uh, the comments. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Hit the little bell next to it so you get my updates the like button fucking smoke signal that you saw the video I don't fucking care let's get some dis some discourse going on about this and in the meantime I've got a fucking friend's wedding to get to so I will catch you fiends on the flip side at the midnight chamber